Welcome to the ultimate medication formula for your illness. In this presentation, I'm going to show you the three effective methods to heal your body only using the power of your mind. So you're probably in this video because you're probably had it with your condition. You are trying to look for things. You get up in the morning, something's still not quite there. You've taken the prescriptions of your doctor and then you're taking the recommendations of other natural therapies whether you like to go the conventional way or the alternative way, and yet something's still not healing you. Well, you're in luck because in this time, what I'm going to help you do is understand how your mind can really help out your body in order to reduce these problems, but not just by symptomatic relief, but also by understanding where these problems come from and how to use the power of this mind to get in a body, in a position where it can heal itself. So the first method, let's just get right into it. So what I want you to do is, you know, find a comfortable chair, a comfortable place. You're probably sitting down right now watching this video. And whether you're in a sofa or a chair, or if you want to just do cross leg, that's fine. Best way to try this simple meditation technique which is going to help alleviate some of your symptoms of whatever illness you're experiencing. Just try this right now. So this is what we're going to do. You place your feet steadily on the floor. And then see how the back is not leaning against the chair. Instead, it's having its own posture. And then keep your hands together. And the reason to keep your hands together is because you want to make sure that they're not fidgeting. They're not going elsewhere. Because if you've noticed that the mind, when the mind is trying to shut down, the hands start moving a lot. So what I want you to do now is take five deep abdominal breaths. And then do four more. And what's going to happen is that I want you to expand your belly, not your chest. You want to do it from your core. And if you're wearing a belt and it's too tight on you, then just loosen it up a little bit. Make sure it's not too noticeable if you're in a public place. But as you're doing these breaths, you're going to start feeling a little bit more relaxed. And take your time. Don't rush into this. So you can either open your eyes or keep your eyes closed, and I'll keep guiding during, during the meditation. And what we're going to do is that on the bottom of your feet, I want you to picture this ball of light. In this case, I'm drawing it black, but I think I'm going to change it to orange. Just because it's cold and I think it's going to help with warming. But anyhow, at the sole of the, of the feet, both feet, I want you to just picture this blob or ball of orange or red light. And, or if you want to pick a color, then go for it. Okay. And then from there, I want you to jump at the crown of your head. And inside, not outside or on the crown, but in the crown, inside, I want you to also imagine this blob of the same color of light. So keep that in your thoughts, keep that in your mind. And this practice is going to help you relax and reduce some of the stress that you may be experiencing at this moment. So it's good to have and try this practice any time of the day. So the next thing we're going to do is connect both extremities or both extremes. So from the feet, we're going to make a line all the way up to the head and then from the head to the feet, whichever way you want to travel with this. You know, just have in your mind a line. Make sure they're connecting. All right. So in the next part, we're going to use the breath to perform this technique. So if you see the drawing on the left side, what I want you to think about is when you breathe in, 
and that's shown by the arrow up. I want you to bring this line up from your feet to your crown. And then when you breathe out, you're releasing through your nose or your mouth. So we're going to put one up from your feet to the crown and then two from your crown out through your mouth. By the way, these two pictures, I just show a different orientation of the same picture. But this is what I want you to do. And I want you to just keep this image in your mind, regardless of what else is going on in your body. I want you to just keep those three blobs or balls of light in your body, regardless of what else is going on. And as you're breathing in, you're bringing up some of that light, or you're connecting the lines, and then as you're breathing out, you're releasing that light. And by performing this technique for about five minutes or so, it's going to help reduce a lot of stress, and it can also do a lot of things for you. It all depends on how focused are you on this. But this is what I want you to try out first. So now that we perform the technique, I want to tell you about the second method. The secret ingredients for a healing body. And I made this into a triangle. And it includes at the top, called the no mind, the left corner, the courage, and then at the right corner, no resistance. And notice how I'm putting no mind, no resistance, instead of just mind with mind that's not working, or what's the other one, like mind not here. And there is a reason for that. And also no resistance, instead of saying let go, because no resistance speaks more to your current state of body. So this triangle are the three things that are going to help out your body to heal from the inside out. The no resistance part, that's really the part where you're not fighting anymore. You're, you know, when you're, when you're trying to listen something and then it just doesn't fit with you, like you're trying to uh, have a conversation and all of a sudden they bring up this political issue that you don't agree upon and then all of a sudden like you're, you know, your body language closes down, you're resisting, your mind, your mind just stops listening, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I just don't want to listen to this anymore. Well, in the, in the body, whatever illness you're experiencing, and I'm going to use, for example, back pain, is that some people actually have back pain because they're un unable to relax the muscles that's either on the back or surrounding the, the area of the back. And of course, for all good purpose, there, there's people who just cannot relax. There's people who have a lot of tension on their shoulders, and that's another example. It's very difficult to relax. And as we know, stress, the an inability to relax, can cause so many small problems that eventually will lead to bigger things. Stress, in a way, is a silent killer. So the resistance aspect is that. The ability for your body to remove the stress when it's not needed. The courage aspect is the ability to move forward, the ability to get up and say, I want no more of this. I want to do something else. I need something else. I need to get up and do something about my life. And the thing is, is about a healing body, that the body is moving, moving away from its illness. An ill body just stays in one place. If it remains in one place, the mind is going to catch up and say, well, if I'm not going anywhere, then I'm just going to stay here. And that's how the process of identification of diseases begins. You may have noticed that people will say, well, I have diabetes for 20 years. And then all of a sudden, like you're being labeled, oh, that's the diabetes guy. Oh, that's the guy with hypertension. Or that's the depre depressive girl. Look at her, she's so depressed all the time. And there's something about that that is 
identification, like you're being identified by your own illness. The courage is the ability to move away from that box. And then the last one is the no mind. And I'm going to explain that, what that is. So it's state of no mind to access. And this no mind term comes from Zen. No mind is that state of exactly what you're thinking, where there is no thinking. And then you're like, what? But how is that possible? How can we have those states of no thinking? Well, in the Zen tradition and in many meditation traditions, that is the state where people are trying to achieve, or they're trying to dwell into more and more. And in reality, the no mind is a state where you can this into a different part of your being and your mind that you never thought was even available to you. So I put this as achieved by something called the source, or the source helps you reach the state of no mind. And what is the source that I'm talking about? Well, in Western traditions, it's the balance of the humors, like the Greek physicians talked about. If you balance all of the humors, then you're going to be in the perfect state of health. So the concept of God, especially from the Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And to some extent, Zoroastrianism as well, which is an older religion of the three. Or in New Age terminology is what's called the infinite power of the universe. In the Eastern traditions, this very subtle layer, and this is the term used in Tantra. Also in the Chinese traditions, in, in Taoism, I believe, they use the term presence of the universal chi. And then in Hinduism, they use the word for Brahma, which is almost equivalent to the word of God. So this is, these are the ways of the no mind, how to access this no mind. And I believe that by able to access this no mind presence, the mind is going to gain an infinite type of energy, an infinite type of power that you can use for your own favor and heal yourself from the inside out. And I will show you how when we get to the case studies. So if that makes sense, then I want you to think about the third method. It's about thinking outside the box. So here's the thing. It's very easy to say, okay, well, you got to think outside the box. You got to do it a different way. Well, it's very easy to say that, but actually doing it, it's like close to impossible. It's just, a, it's just as hard as going to the moon with no rocket. Thinking outside the box requires knowledge outside of your common environment. It requires something more than that. It requires listening to your intuition and going with it. And the thing is that this, the box that we all live in is our current illness right now. If you're ill, if you are having some sort of condition at this moment in your mind and what you've read and what you've learned is like, I'm never going to get better of this. I'm never going to be able to have better lifestyle than this. Like, how is this possible? Like a lot of people have that belief system in them. And to some extent, there are things that are true about your current condition that can limit things for you to do. But this is something else. This is something healing beyond your body, but also healing your mind too. Thinking outside of the box requires you to get out of your belief systems, your religion if you have one, especially if you're dedicated to one. Like try to get out of it. Or not try to get out of it, but try to think what other possibilities could be there too. The values of morality and moralities of yesterday, like I've heard from Zen master saying that if you get attached to your moralities of today, tomorrow you're going to get killed because you believe that morality of yesterday. And then past lives. There's people who believe that they come back and they have things to do. And then, you know, like they have a mission, a life lesson to learn. And that's fine. But if you're going to be attached to this life purpose and life lesson without moving on, 
then in a way it's also a bondage that's keeping you here and then etc there's many ways to prevent you from thinking outside of the box so that is what my third method is and this is what I'm gonna help you about I'm gonna help you in your case get out of your mentality of like of I am my disease or I am what I'm suffering or I'm suffering because I deserve it like we need to remove that victimization aspect and that's what I'm gonna help you do I have been doing a lot of this work with many people for many years before I became a doctor so now I want to show you a few case studies so we have Charles he is a very dear friend of mine naturopathic and acupuncture colleague he's always had history of asthma for as long as I've known him last year we had a chat and I said why don't I just teach you this technique that I learned on the on the winter and it was called the inner heat and Tibetan tradition is called Tumo basically it teaches you how to dwell in one part of your body and just produce heat out of that and by producing heat you're producing a sense of tranquility in your body as well so Charles says yeah definitely so we had this uh, a few sessions together he felt something I mean at the first session I couldn't tell much because it takes time to reproduce but later on he said that he started feeling like he could breathe better there's times that he said that he felt warmer and then other times he said that he just had less feelings of stress altogether so he was able to see something different something new and of course he integrated this practice into his own uh, philosophies from learning Chinese medicine and other naturopathic modalities and then created his own variation of this and it's working just as fine because again what I teach is not a set in stone teaching it's only something that you can use temporarily and then modify it later on next case study is Sujin she's an international student from Korea and also a psychology student that's her major she wants to be a psychiatrist and what I told her to do because she was having a lot of panic attacks and difficulties sleeping I said why don't I just try some techniques together she said sure so when I was with her what I tried to do is create a safe environment in the heart center so I created that safe environment for her and it was found that she had a lot of fears that she didn't know where they were coming from but somehow they were there but the moment she started exploring this and started started realizing that she could go to her safe area which was inside of her body the panic attacks is diminishing more and more now of course this wasn't the only thing she was doing for panic attacks she was also reading herself doing other therapies seeing other doctors for this and then also she was able to get better sleep so this is what I do this is what I want you to think about when you see my my web page I want you to think about what the presentation was about today the only the only tool we're using here is your mind and the ability to expand that power into some into things that you've never experienced or felt before okay so what I want you to do now is go down at the bottom of the page click where it says book now for a free consultation and then just follow the instructions and right there is going to tell you what day and date works best for you and then from there I'm gonna give you a call on the phone or we can set up a Skype chat if you prefer it that way and just to tell you a little bit about myself is that I'm a naturopathic doctor in the state of Pennsylvania I do home visits and online consultations and I've been a practitioner since June of 2017 but it hasn't been only this time where I've been practicing this type of meditation medicine I've been using this for as long as I remember practicing meditation which would have been around my early 20s so this is something 
to help others achieve that state of mind. And it is a new state of mind, it is, it is a new attitude, and together we're going to get there. You're going to be able to get out of your box and be able to see the world in a different way. And that in itself can be very healing for the body. It's very difficult to say how your body will heal specifically from these meditations. But one thing is for sure, as long as a shift happens in your mind and your life, then the, the body will follow. And that's been my experience and that's been the experience of others. Okay, so go all the way down to the page, click to make an appointment, and then I'll chat with you then. Thank you.